Have a good look at that in that intro page, people. Way to go. Oh, welcome everybody to another edition of Late Night Dominion, episode 15. Glad you all could join us again tonight. Take it away, Beetle. Ow. Hey everybody, how you doing? Late Night Dominion on time, right at the top of the hour as always. Uh, we've got tonight, you know, people you may recognize. We've got Blank Space, Steroid User, Anabolics. we got Aegon, our friendly ginger man. And we've got Nixus, who's just silly. And you've got me, who's tired, and is probably going to say some stupid shit tonight. Take it away, Blank. Oh, it's going to be one of those shows. <clears throat> Hi, folks. Uh, for, before we get into the show synopsis, I want to let you know that Igon had a little bit of a fender bender today. So uh, he's not going to be talking that much tonight. It was a car accident, and uh, he's going to be purely producing, maybe speaking up a couple of times. But uh, he's just like the rest of us, badass, and he's uh, here trying to push through. So thanks, Aegon, for uh, showing up. Please don't uh, post links in chat. Uh, if you want, need to send a link, you can send them to Chicken Juice. Uh, you can also send all of your questions to Chicken Juice. Uh, make sure that you follow this Twitch channel. Check us all out on Twitter. We have lots of really important, awesome, insightful things to say. Make sure to like our stuff on Facebook. <clears throat> I want to mention that uh, it was a very slow week for Wildstar News. Uh, we do have a main topic of discussion. <laughs> we are going to try and open some things up at the end for as subtopics if we get some cool interaction with you guys in chat. So feel free if you got something really cool that you wanted to discuss. Uh, maybe we've discussed before. It's been a couple weeks, whatever. Uh, go ahead and uh, type them out for Chicken in chat. He'll put it in a document, and we'll get to it towards the end of the show. Uh, I do want to let you know that our main topic, as you guys saw, is the evolution of MMOs. And we've kind of picked a couple of uh, things that we wanted to talk about. We weren't going to go over the entire evolution, but some points that we wanted to make. And, while, and why Wildstar is epic, and we're really looking forward to it. With that, we're going to get into your weekly news. Like I said, there's not a whole hell of a lot to send to you, but first link that you're going to get is an IGN article. It's uh, why World of Warcraft loss is Wildstar Games. Um, Blizzard had announced that they had lost another uh, half a million subscribers in three months. Um, right now, for their subscriber base, it's the lowest it's been since 2007. Um, it's a pretty cool article. It's talking about, you know, the transition of times and whatnot. I would definitely check it out and help inspire tonight's uh, big topic. Uh, I'm not really sure who these guys are off the top of my head. There was an article, uh, Wildstar, How to Survive the MMO Update Arms Race. That was uh, coined by uh, the gaffer. It was talking about how games are uh, putting out updates, content updates, on a faster, you know, cycle how this can stress out development teams and especially those who have to generate this content and uh, how you know they're trying to make that work, especially for Wildstar. You're going to get that link. Definitely read into that one. It was really cool. Uh, the next two, <laughs> everyone's giving me crap for in chat. Uh, well, on our Google document, there's uh, Meet the Mordash and Meet the Chua. And um, because they are lore related, <laughs> I absolutely did not um, read it about them. So you're going to get those over in, again, chat or on YouTube. You'll see those down in the description. Um, do you guys have anything that you wanted to discuss about meeting the Mordash or meeting the Chula? Because I totally did not read either one. So the I guess I can go. We're trying to figure. Oh, this is go ahead. Yeah, no. Um. It was kind of interesting, and it's, it's actually here, like the whole interview go down between uh, between uh, the Mordesh and uh, the Chua too, because Mondo Zax. It's funny because when we first got introduced to Mondo Zax, I imagined him as being like a really well-spoken, like intelligent little, you know, Chua. And it turns out, despite his like intelligence, he still talks in like these really short phrases, and he he kind of comes off kind of as a dum dum, but he's not really like he, he hides his game kind of thing. So uh, he's still a really cool character and whatnot. And then you've got Lazarus on the side. He's a uh, 
he's pretty well spoken, kind of a little stuck up a little bit, you know, kind of like the Cassian almost. And uh, it's kind of cool because if you actually read through the interview, uh, it kind of dwells on the whole, is he a space zombie or not, which was a discussion we had last week. Uh, between Black and I, it was a little heated whether or not it was a space zombie, but he, he goes through and says, you know, he doesn't actually want to eat brains, Blank. So I don't know where your argument's going to go from there. He's not a zombie. But anyway, we're cutting it there. I, I, know, no exactly, more I know exactly <laughs> where the argument's going to go from there. Wouldn't any wouldn't any zombie cover-up say they're not trying to eat your brain in the first place? Yeah. Yep. Obviously, then you turn around, brain munching. Easy mode, Nixus is dead, brain munching. I but I will talk about zombies really thought about anything other than brains. Go look up go look up the new premise. Oh, it's terrible. Don't look it up. Wesley Snipes <laughs> has a new movie coming out about zombies. It looks awful, but I'm a Wesley Snipes fan. All right. Mondo Zach's talking that way in the the way they talk, but still being so brilliant. I find it actually pretty cool. And you know, I was the same way with Nixus. You read Mondo's backstory and you think it's gonna be super well spoken, you know, everybody thinks smart and well spoken go hand in hand or Stuff like that, but I think it's interesting that they're so tech savvy and intricate with the things they can build, but then may not be as well spoken. Um, that was actually pretty cool to me. Blank, what do you think? I just wanted to comment back about the the eating of brains. Somebody else just mentioned when they run out of blue goo that they get a hunger. Uh, it's not necessarily the 1960s, 1950s zombies eating brains. It's a flesh-eating zombie. If you look at any of the uh, zombies as, as they've been portrayed recently, they are eating whatever. Uh, go watch a little Walking Dead. It's not like they're eating your brains. They're just ripping up whatever you got. So, again, <laughs> just because he's a smart zombie and he has a little bit more control and he's all like, hey, I'm totally not going to eat your brain, just your arms and your legs and your t- – like – I don't buy it. Yeah. I still don't buy it. I know. Until Pappy comes here it's and he's like, they are not psychology. zombies. <laughs> That's probably what it is. All right, go ahead. You guys can continue talking about lore stuff. I'll, I will listen intently. No. I mean, you got zombies and gerbils. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's exciting to to kind of start thinking about how these characters are going to be developed and their involvement in the universe because – there's, there's really a lot you could do, especially with uh, Lazarin's, you know, dead wife and how he, he went through that emotionally and, like, what he's going to do to like, kind of fix his reputation with his own race kind of thing. And then you've got Mondo's axe on the side, like, what kind of cool inventions is he going to pull out and is that going to play into the, the lore as well as the game progresses? Like, is he going to eventually, like, create some huge laser that's going to be, like, almost penetrating to the core of Nexus, that kind of thing, so. But anyway, that's just, I could go on forever about the <laughs> Yeah, well, you mentioned like them just like grabbing stuff, and I was I almost you know kind of consider them the gerbil MacGyver. You just give them like a, a <laughs> pile of junk, and they'll somehow make a bomb or a gun out of it. That's that's kind of my like take on them, and I find that pretty interesting. But yeah, we can. That's move at the on. top of my Photoshop to do list. Jesus, uh, Mondo MacGyver, dude. Uh. The next thing that we found was really cool. Again, we, we take the time to go and try to find the really cool uh, news that's out there. Sometimes it's not even news from an official source. It's some fan art or something like that. Uh, over at Wildstar Central, I don't have the name in front of me. You guys are going to get a scene. Um, there, were, there was an artist who made a bunch of avatars and said, hey, I made these. Feel free to use them. Uh, they were really, really cool, and I wanted to uh, have you guys have a chance to check them out because that stuff's – that's pretty cool. When I find Those things like that, I definitely want to show it to you. Those are cool. Um, yeah, the, like the, I, little, the little carrot dude. I really, uh, I really enjoy that, not art style, but that kind of graphic design philosophy with boxing something in, but then having the edges of them out as long as it, you know, still fits within the avatar limits. That always makes things look interesting to me, and I try to do that in my own signatures. But dang, I didn't even see these because I got home late. These are balling. Yeah, these, again, we're, we're trying to bring you news, and sometimes it comes from official sources, but this was just one of those things that I found, and I was like, 
This is really cool. If people miss this, we want them to see this. Uh, you are going to get a link. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can check it out. And uh, it looks like the artist is Alera. And I'm not sure if that's male or female. So what I'll say is they said, feel free to use them anywhere. You know, I made them for the community. That's really awesome. So uh, again, check those out. Maybe pick one up from somewhere. There's a lot of really cool ones. I like the, uh, the Chew O'Clock one. I thought that was pretty cool. Are there any other ones that I really like? No, it was mostly the two o'clock. All right. Um, yeah, that clock guys, is. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, the next news article that we have for you is uh, massively. It's a poll. I'm sorry. It's a leaderboard. It's Wildstar versus Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, I got to look at it here. I pulled it up. Uh, right now, um, 3,500 people have voted for. Wildstar, and out of people polled, that is 57.5%. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online has uh, 1365, which is about 22%. Uh, 780 ish people said that they'd like both, and that was about 12%. And uh, very small minority, 450 people said neither. I uh, kind of felt bad with this poll because. Um, from what I understand, Elder Scrolls is not really ramping up or going anywhere. So it's kind of like beating up on the, the small kid in, in gym class. I, I would like to see, you know, one maybe for like Arcage and, you know, EQ next, especially when we're going to get some information, hopefully this weekend. That would be kind of cool. But uh, anyways, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Feel free to vote for Wildstar. And uh, yeah, well, let's see what my next article here is. Um there was a tweet, for those of you who um, are interested in checking out all this stuff about Wildstar and can't go to conventions, um, the big reveal that came from uh, Troy, which is a CRB Ether, Ether, I always say that wrong, um, they're going to have a panel at PAX Prime on Saturday, August 31st. It's going to be from 12 to 1 p.m. They're going to have a live stream so that even if you're at home, you're going to be able to enjoy it and watch it. And uh, I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of people at PAX Prime. And for those of you who can't, you know, you'll be able to see some of us yelling and screaming uh, during the panel. So, uh, <laughs> And lastly, oh, we have another fun scene. Um, Onrez of Sidler and Exile and a part-time contributor of Wildstar Fans was able to take a top-secret tour of Carbine and uh, – you know, we pinned him down, we beat him up, we tried to get anything we could out of him, and the only picture he was allowed to leave was with this. And I'm gonna wait till I see it here. Um, roll. This, this right here, is a picture of Bardic's hands. Mm hmm. We've this got, is, uh, this is. Go ahead. We've got. What it is is two Dell monitors. I'm assuming one's turned vertically in that Dell monitor dock style. <laughs> um, correct me if I'm wrong, Jen. Or it's probably just a high-resolution one for the game. Yeah. Widescreen, most likely. Both horizontal. You got to be cool and, like, put your email in, like, the vertical one, like all the cool kids do. But yeah, uh, tons of spoilers from Jen's desk here. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, a thing that, that needs to happen is you need to take a picture of your hands on your keyboard. you got to put that on Twitter, and you got to send it to Bardic. So um, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm definitely going to be doing that next week or sometime this weekend. Uh, so, so feel free. If uh, you want to take a picture of your keyboard and or mouse and your hands and put it up, I don't even have a hashtag because we're just spitballing this right now. So somebody come up with a cool Dude, hashtag for that. Like a year from now, whenever we'll be like in the middle of the like BGs or whatever's going on and I'll get killed, I'll just be like, that'll be the first image to pop up in my head. I'll be like, oh, it's death, the hands of the keyboard. It's just like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's funny, though. <laughs> l l lucky, lucky on res, dude. Uh, that must have been a really good time. Yeah. Can I watermark mine so people don't try to pretend to be my hands? 
Okay, you guys gonna have to pick. Hey, um, chicken, pick up all of those hashtags, and uh, we will we'll pick one out at the end of the show. All right. Um, as we mentioned, that's the news. There was not a whole heck of a lot of stuff to to give you. It wasn't like a you know a Mordes Chua release where everybody on the earth had pictures and interviews. And no, it was very little news this week. So um, we are going to get into the topic for the show. If you guys have subtopics that you'd like to talk about after this, feel free. And um, we wanted to discuss a little bit about the evolution of MMOs and why it makes Wildstar, you know, intriguing, especially to me, uh, the guys here on the team, and hopefully to everyone that's watching this. Um, we're going to discuss, you know, the difference between the old school and the new school, um, the difference uh, whether it is. Um, tab targeting or action based and give you some of the experiences we've had, you know, going forward. So um, we'll hop into the topic here. I do want to mention that um, a long, long time ago in my super nerd years, uh, I actually played a couple of text based role playing games. Um, some of them um, had what I like to liken to the tab targeting, where it was a very simple system. Uh, and some of them were really cool, where like if you died, you lost your character forever. That really sucked. The the thing to note here is that there was a change. I'm not sure exactly when, but um, they went from those regular systems, which were very easy, not very complex, to action-based RPGs, where you had to get a, a program called ZMUD, or you had to, to make these triggers, ha have all these things to be competitive. And they were able to sell credits to people. Uh, it very, very lucrative, and a couple of them even tried to do something with that. Uh, but we saw that change. I saw that change from text-based, and we kind of looked at it and said, hey, this is kind of happening now with MMOs. So where we start, again, uh, uh, somebody's putting something there. Okay, tab-targeting RPGs. Evolutionary. So, you know, we have... Uh, EverQuest, Lineage 2, Dark Age, Camelot, and wow, these are tab target. You have tab, you have your target. Uh, they might give you something like a focus uh, so that you can do additional stuff to the side, but in general, one target, one action. Um, you rely on managing cooldowns, positioning, and most games have an internal two-hit modifier, which was needed as a design because there's no freeform movement. Uh, if you always hit all the time, that takes out some of the fun from it. Uh, Beetle, thoughts on uh, tab targeting? Yeah, uh, I mean, of course, we're not going to be able to label all the MMOs that have had tab targeting in the past, but these are some of the big ones we felt. But my big thing, and we're, we're, we're going to talk about like action-based and movement-based dodging MMOs as well. But the thing with tab targeting for me, when you didn't, when you weren't exactly moving, it was really uh, your position, you know, your position within the fight really helped. I can recall, like, you know, certain summoner-type builds and stuff. Like, I'd get to a certain point, and I'd summon something, but then I would position myself all the way towards the back of the fight, come back up, be a summon, stuff like that. So it's it's interesting to see, and we know Wildstar is going to be more on the go, how action and dodging comes together with positioning, and we saw some of that in Guild Wars 2 and stuff like that. But, um... Yeah, Blank's just walking away. <laughs> no, it's it's, um, um, it's definitely a cool thing because, you know, I, I mean, I, I definitely haven't been around playing MMOs for as long as you guys have, so I wasn't back, you know, during the, the text-based. But I, I think I started with, like, what was it, Priston Tale back in the day? And the combat system in, in that game when I first started was just, like, basically it was, you know, t you target, your character walks over to them. You hit the one and two and three, and that's it. You know, there wasn't really too much, wasn't too intuitive, but we're talking like a decade ago. And it's, it's fun to watch the progression over the years of the way, like, the combat's changed. You, you go from this simplistic system where, even though some, some MMOs today still use that, like Final Fantasy XIV, where it's still tab target and you, you use your, your skills to shoot and whatnot. And it's something that people have just kind of gotten attached to and they don't necessarily want to see changed. I feel like in general, gamers can't really make up their mind. They're like, I want this, I want that. When they finally have it, they want the other thing. So that's a totally different thing that I'm going on to here. But, like, you, you have those old systems, and then, you know, at one point you had Age of Kone that kind of introduced, like, this brand-new combat system that was way more, you know, interactive, and you had to, like, you had to actually actively use your skills in, in 
battle and movement kind of played in, not too, too much. And then you've got like Guild Wars, where in Guild Wars One it was it was the same thing. You just click and your character walk itself over, and that's it. And now you, you see Guild Wars Two, where you know it's way different. It's still the same universe, but they they took what they used to. They learned a lot over those years, and they realized that you know you have to keep the player, you know, immersed in the combat to really have that experience that you want to have in an MMO. And I personally like the progression that we're seeing in the combat systems. Um, can can y'all hear me? I'm seeing some people saying I'm having sound issues. You're good now. I, th I think it's blank. You're fine Blank's now. Blank's mic picking up movement. Oh, okay. So you you see these games progress, and now you've got Guild Wars 2, which had a really fun combat system, in my opinion, and like. It's taken it a step even farther, and you're looking at like Wildstar with all these telegraphs, which is going to mean like it's going to mean like not only are you going to have to know your rotation, but like we've said over and over with these telegraphs, it's going to be constant movement. And I think like if you look at WoW, some of the boss fights, it was like you know there was there were the phases, and you'd have to position yourself like you said in the back of the room if you were the warlock and that kind of thing. Now it's going to be not just a phase, but throughout the whole fight, it's going to be consistent. You know, move right, move left, like each one of their attacks are going to be based on telegraphs. Well, as is what I'm assuming, at least. So, you know, I'm waiting to see how that pans out. Are we going to see, is it going to almost be too much? You know, is it going to require too much out of the player? And they're just going to be like, listen, I can barely focus on what I'm trying to do because I'm constantly moving all the time and I don't know what's going on. I can barely look at the boss. I'm just dodge rolling all the time, you know. So, I don't know. We'll see. I, I personally love the progression that we're seeing. But um, I don't know. What do you think? Beetle. <laughs> Which one? Uh, yeah, I was just gonna I was just gonna mention real quick that I really loved the Age of Conan in combat. It might have just be been the, like that the fact that it was mature and you could chop people's heads off was kind of cool in the MMO setting. And it was combo based kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed Age of Conan's combat, but it kind of lacked in content. But besides that, you mentioned telegraphs at the end and how that forms into you know tab targeting positioning. The boss may move, the boss may turn. Are those telegraphs going to stay, you know, in this area, or are they going to move with you? So, yeah, interesting stuff. Blank? wanted to discuss a little bit about, you know, I, I primarily, I, I enjoy PvP. So when I look at tab targeting, uh, it, it made it easier. Okay, you have the internal to hit, you know, somebody pops a skill, and it, makes it so that they dodge more, it increases a stat or whatever. Um, but it does make combat very linear. It's, okay, they have these cooldowns, I can manage that. Uh, if you have knowledge of the classes, okay, cool. Now it just comes down to being able to pop your cooldowns, um, having better gear, and being more skilled. And, and the skill part was, I mean, really, in a tab target environment, it was line of sight, uh, for those of you who did arenas, I'm sure uh, pillar humping is something you know very well, as I do. Um, it's just, it, it's where we used to be. And that's why when I first started playing Terra, I was like, this is amazing. Wait, you mean that guy just blew his big cooldown and I dodged? I had something to do with it? That's amazing. Uh, and that's why, you know, it's one of the reasons I'm super excited for, you know, Wildstar PvP. Um, the next part that I have here, sorry guys, uh, was why well, I was able to bring a level of immersion over EQ, Lineage, Dark Age, Camelot, um, because it came from an established world, and at the time, the design and the content was driven initially, you know, by the, uh, by the developers. People got in, they were excited about the game, and they said, we want this. And they said, okay, we want PvP, for example. So they started with Battlegrounds, and Battlegrounds were this whole big deal, and then they had to balance what skills you had for what you could do in the PvP. But that's what made it so amazing. Everybody was like, this has everything under one roof. And this was unheard of at the time. You know, you, you normally either had one or the other. Um, Beetle, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm going to call it shots fired because you just called EverQuest in the world of Norath not established. And I'm going to fight you. That we, can, we can fight. It's, that's there actually fine. 
Um, I guess they, it, 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 it's true. I say, like, you know, those games also quickly broke immersion really fast with tedium that they later in, invited in, and like, daily quests and reputation grinds that, you know, got ridiculous. Go ahead, uh, Link. All right, All right. Go ahead. Um, Nixus, go ahead. Yeah, um, when it comes to, you know, the fact that WoW was built on a, with a certain level of, like, you were already immersed in the universe when you started, kind of, because you already knew, like, you were familiar with the universe, you were familiar with the characters, you, you already had that, you know, you, you were already a step ahead. I, I think that Carbine, at least in my from my point of view, they, they have the right approach, because, you know, with these weekly updates, You've got a lot of lore that's coming, you know, at you trickle, but you know, it's little trickles of of lore. And I mean, I'm assuming we're still a ways away from release, which means by the time the game does come around, and if you're a, a fan of Wildstar and you're paying attention, by the time you get you step into the universe, you're going to be familiar with a lot of what you see. Like, you know, you, if, for example, they they show you exactly what you know Victor Lazarin looks looks like. I I bet you anything. If I'm walking around the game and I see him, I'll be like, holy crap! It, it you know, it's Victor Lazarin, like. Oh my god, and it's it's gonna it helps with the immersion, giving us that lore ahead. It's what I liked with Guild Wars 2 as well. Um, I read the books Ghost of Ascalon before uh, before I actually went and played it, and um, I mean, I feel like in order to have that level of immersion, it's important to invest yourself a little that extra step and be aware of the lore because it does help. Um, there was about a decade, what was it like a decade or even 15 years before um, WoW came out that the universe existed. Am I, am I oh, right for those numbers? It, for, yeah. It's like 20 even? Like, it's crazy. So that essentially, I mean, I'm just saying, like, if you want to have that same feeling that you had with WoW the first time you stepped into the universe, you know, take those, take that extra time, learn about the lore. You know, it, we, we're on a shorter time frame, but it, it's still possible, in my opinion. So I'm not too scared about the fact that Wildstar hasn't had, you know, an established universe over the last two decades. That's something we can work right past. What do you think, Beetle? He's just skipping blank. Take that blank. Oh, uh, blank, go ahead. No, it, no, I it's fine. I'm going to talk. He's, he's abbreviating himself in the document. We're so professional. Let's talk about that. But uh, <laughs> Nix is kind of nailed on the head there saying that he, he read the Guild Wars books, and I'm always a firm believer in, you know, you can get as involved in a game's lore as you feel based on whether or not you're taking the time to read stuff. Cause there's always going to be in game developer groups. There's always going to be those creative directors, those concept guys that are building a world. What, whatever game you're playing halo for Christ's sake, like halo has like six books now. So it, it, it just depends on how nerdy you're willing to get, I guess is the thing. And how, how much you want to be uh, in this world and, you want to walk past like three NPCs and be like, "Oh yeah, that guy's sister is over here," you know? Like, it it just really <laughs> de depends. Blank. What I wanted to say was, uh, and I didn't think about this until Nick just just said what he said. What if that's a, a reason? You know, everyone's bitching about these lore-related Wildstar Wednesdays. What if that's part of their plan? Don 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 is to. Get this information out there so that you are more hooked to the brand when the game comes out. Um, you find the things that you're drawn to, and they have the lore. You've been reading it for a while. You know, oh, Wildstar Wednesday was lore crap. I already read it. But you've picked up some tidbits. You found some things that you liked, and it's increasing that brand recognition and strength to you. So is, is that perhaps what they're aiming for? Is that a rhetorical question? Yeah, yeah, that kind of just up in the air, just just a thought, because I really feel that that's what they're doing, you know, and, and it makes sense. We want you guys to be immersed in our game, so not every Wildstar Wednesday is going to be something amazing. It's going to be something that brings you into the game without maybe you even knowing it. Um, so that was tab targeting RPGs, uh, MMORPGs, sorry. Now we're going to talk a little bit about passion-based ones. Um, but this is where it's going to be some opinions thrown around. I'm going to enjoy the chat, but 
Actually, based on MMOs, a couple ones we picked out, Guild Wars 2. I called it freeform PvP, or freeform movement. Uh, in my experience, Terra was the full, full-on action MMO. Again, that's my opinion. And I feel like the next level of shit coming out is Wildstar. And what they're doing is adding telegraphs to the X. Um, there's a couple of key points Thanks to get into robot. it. But Why are you being a robot, bro? Beal, go ahead. Am I Clippy? Am I a robot? Or is it just blank? No, you're fine. You're I'm, fine. It's just blank. I'm assuming it's just blank. Yeah, what a guy, <laughs> huh? Uh, you talk about, we talk about the freeform PvP of Guild Wars 2 and, you know, Terra being the full action MMO. Terra is one of those games where it was so, like, conducive to, like, you having to make sure, like, if you were, like, I, God, I forget, and I'm sorry if I mess this up, but, like, the heavy guys with the axes, if you're swinging and you're not even close enough, you're wasting so much energy, so many cooldowns, and I can't remember how many times I watch Blank stream and just miss everything. So it's like, <laughs> it, it's, it's, there's a good, there's a good point between Guild Wars 2 and a good point between Terra where you take, like Guild Wars 2 technically had tab targeting and it's got its dodging, you know, mechanic in the red circles as we call them. And then Terra's got all this stuff where it's aiming. And I think Darkfall does the aiming too back when I played it way ago, but it's, I just like to see a common ground there, just for blank space's sake, so he's not missing with everything like he did in Terra. <laughs> that was the thing. That, that just, was. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to decide if I want to pick this microphone up and throw it on the ground. Um. So the big point that I had here for action-based MMOs, the important part is this: the trade-off. Instead of having a, a two-hit variable or a stat, whether they put it on gear or not, um, if you blow a huge cooldown and miss somebody, you're, you're screwed. Uh, if I happen to see that sorcerer or archer coming towards me, I know because I see it, I hear it, um, and they pop something that's really going to hurt, and I dodge out of the way. We're not talking about 5% to miss on this or... No, we're talking because of gaming intuition, because of experience, because of skill, um, being able to uh, dodge because you've got a, a better FPS and an internet connection, all of these sort of things, you're now able to use those variables to get out of this. That is the biggest, hugest part that we wanted to talk about because it, it ups your game and makes the, that skill ceiling so much higher. Nixus, your thoughts? Yeah, on this whole, you know, if you vote your cooldowns and you miss because you weren't, you know, really paying attention or if you're just being a derp and you, you, you turned your camera too much or whatever the deal is, like, I foresee some extreme conversations during arenas and that kind of thing later on. Because uh, I, I personally love playing a, a healer when I played, uh, wow, my main was a hunter, but anytime I did arenas, it was on my... Uh, on my resto druid, just, yes, I know, give me all the crap you want about it. Season two was incredibly fun. Anyway, um, I, I, I foresee some fun times because now, like, if you miss your, like, let's say you've got this huge cooldown heal where it, it's like, you know, pop, you pop your partner back up to like 100%, whatever, and it's about, he's got like 5% health and you're about to win the fight and it's all depending on that. And you're like turning, you sneeze or whatever the deal is, or you're just not aiming correctly and you miss. Oh, goodness, I don't want to be in team speak with Blank when that happens. <laughs> it's just, you know, it, it's going to add, a, a, the, this, you know, what you were talking about the, the, a couple episodes ago, you know, the skill ceiling, like the fact that it's no longer about your stats and it is about how you actually handle your own character and the movement and that kind of thing. It's, it's going to be, uh, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to make, make, make the PvP experience in and of itself a lot more fun. And then a PvE too, you know, like if the bosses, like uh, Beetle was saying a bit earlier, if they do have movement involved in their fights, like if the boss hops around the room or whatever and you're not paying attention, like that's just some DPS loss and your character's not going to turn, adjust itself and start like auto attacking. You're going to have to pay attention to that. So I, I definitely am excited for it. However, what I will say, and, you know, I'm going to get crap for this. I like 
the combat system in the sense that like you have to aim your skills. I don't like the telegraphs because I I don't like seeing where they're going. Like I want to learn. Like I I feel like it would be way more fun. You'd have so much more to learn about your character if you just had to get used to the distance that attacks went, and it would add a little bit more difficulty to it. But that's just me. That's just me. I wish you didn't get to see where your your like your attacks went till. It's no longer like looking at your skill bar now to see when your your red skill turns green to say that you can actually activate it. It's seeing where the tip of your telegraph is, you know? I, I just wish it was neither. You 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 look, get a skill, learn how to use it. Get get adjust adjust it, you know? Go up to some mobs and test it a couple of times, trial and error and get used to that and it it would make PVP way more interesting in my opinion. <laughs> but that's just my two cents on PVP. Um go ahead. Beetle. <laughs> there's yeah, like, a, that's there's like a pause. It's like, go ahead, Beetle. Because he's trying to figure yeah, out where we back are. I'm like but... going between tabs here, and I'm just like, oh god, oh god. <laughs> but that's the that's the big thing for me is you mentioned the trade off PVE versus PVP. PVE you can raid wipe if you miss a cooldown. PVP, like you said, even using basic skills, that's the trade off. There is great for PVP because. Not only does positioning and strategy come into PvP then, it's, you know, is this guy within my range on the skill, or how, you know, how often am I going to lead him with this skill based on it? If if I miss this and he's right on the edge of it, how screwed am I? Because I, maybe this is my one of two CC breakers I have, and I used it before his every hit me. That's that's another thing where the trade-off separates the good players from the bad, or the mediocre even. It's knowing your skills and the cooldowns. I mean, I can't remember how many times with my mouse in Guild Wars 2 as an engineer, I accidentally would just, like, be running around and I'd press whatever the blowback rifle was, and I'd just be like, we'd be running in World v. World, and I'd be, like, readjusting my hand, and I accidentally hit it, and everybody would be running, and all of a sudden I'd be like, and I'd just fly back, like, 12 feet. And we're like, what are you doing? I was like, ah, intended, intended, we're going. So it's just <laughs> understanding when to use those things and the trade-off with those is awesome to me because it just makes it so I sit down and I'm like, all right, here's my skill bar. I know this, I know this. What's my situation for this? When am I doing this? It just it allows me to sit down and be like, I'm going to be better than someone else, and that's my trade-off. Blank? All right. I may be wrong in this, but the strongest thing I can, the strongest argument I have for anything that was really, really uh, skill based, uh, coming with being an RPG like World of Warcraft, you know, if I was on my rogue, I had to be up in your face, I'd hit you, say my warrior. Um, when I played my mage, when I played the frost mage, uh, to pull off shatter combos, that shit was a pain in the ass. And it's the only thing I can think of that had that next, like, it was aiming for telegraphs, it was aiming for action-based, but that's, like, the only example I can think of where, you know, it was like, okay, I'm going to have my little jackass put out his frost thing, and I've got it timed for when my friggin' um, cast is going to be completed. Other than that, I can't think of anything that really bridges that, that gap. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit just about class knowledge. Um, I talked about gaming intuition. Having knowledge of the other classes, what they can do and can't do, I think is going to be huge, especially because of the skill ceiling. Uh, knowing that that guy has um, this skill and it affects me this way is one level. Now we're going to talk about, you know, what would you do because you've played that class or you've played them. You see what they do, um, how they rotate things. Um, the next level and the reason why action base is so much more difficult is you have things like sprinting and double jumping, which we're going to talk down a little bit here, but we, we saw it where uh, there was a video where somebody was like, okay, I'm in an arena, now I'm double jump sprinting away, and if you don't have that resource to use right then, you're shit out of luck. They could be bandaging, they could be healing themselves, you could be doing a lot of other stuff, so um, thank you, Nixus, for letting me see that. Aegon, go ahead. Oh, going off what she said with class knowledge, um, it's definitely going to be a much bigger thing because not only are you going to have to learn what your class does, what the other class does, what your uh, wild star, for example, what your telegraphs look like. You have to know what every other person's class telegraph looks like. Um, th that learning curve is going to ex 
become exponential as, as more and more things you know get added and you know you fight more and more bosses and more and more enemies and you know combine common combinations of different people um so it's definitely going to be a nice interesting learning curve uh that's definitely going to raise that skill ceiling for for anyone trying to make it to the top and and become an expert um the i wanted to explain that a little bit i realized we started talking about it um for those of you who are kind of wondering you know game intuition i described it a little bit the best way to give you like a feeling of it very subjective is if you've played um league of legends or, or team fortress 2 if you're playing in a lane, you know, middle, top, bottom, uh, and you have map awareness and you look around and you see, okay, wait, that guy was missing. He's going to be here because it takes him this long to travel. That's gaming intuition. You know from experience. You know how long it takes without boots or wet boots, early game, mid game. Yeah, and it's the same thing for a game like Team Fortress 2. When you're, you know, that engineer in the back line and you're like, this guy doesn't look right. He's walking towards me. Uh, you, you have an understanding of class knowledge, the map, uh, and because of experience, you're like, I'm going to shoot this guy in the face. So, you know, because fuck it, you know, he's either going to not take any damage, depending on your server, or you're going to kill a spy. So, uh, Nixus, thoughts? Just real quick, you were talking earlier about bridging that gap, you know, like um, with the uh, little mage combo you were talking about. Uh, I kind of saw that a little bit in, um, in Hunters when it comes to using their trap launcher. Because uh, there was a little bit of that, you know, having to recognize, whoa, you know, the rogue's missing. Where's he at? You have to kind of, like, assume where you think he's going to pop out. and uh, Or even somebody who, who doesn't invis, but they run behind an obstacle, you know, out of line of sight. You have to assume, you know, are they going to come out of the right or left side based on my movement, that kind of thing. So it, it's exciting, and that was something I really, really loved doing. And it, it really it separated the good players from the bad based on, like, how you could make those judgment calls in a, you know, a high-stress environment. So I'm excited to see that apply to pretty much every player in, in whether it's PvE or PvP in games like Wildstar. It's, uh, I, I feel like it's, you're going to have to take it to that next level and you're going to have to be like, you know, I can't F around if I want to do this. Like, I have to make sure that I'm paying attention and doing the best I can. Like, it's, it's that skill ceiling that we keep mentioning and I love it. I absolutely love it. But uh, Blank. Yeah, or Beetle, I'm going to let you talk, Beetle, I'll but after you. me. Um, but I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> um, someone mentioned Flares and Hunters. It's Again, thank you, because this is what we're talking about. That's kind of bridging the gap between the um, tab, tab target and action, because imagine a World of Warcraft where you see a Flare go up, and as a rogue, you either sprinted to try and get out of it, uh, or... In an action MMO, I see that flare go up, and I can dodge away. That's the difference. Uh, being able to use that resource to get out of the way, where normally, if they knew through intuition that you were near there, potentially there, you were shit out of luck. So, uh, Beetle. Yeah, it's, it's uh, just talking about, you know, when some guy's running at you in PvP, all right, what class is he? You know, warrior. What what do warriors usually open up with in this situation? What can I get out of it? There, there's always, there's always, in any game, tab targeting action. There's always that method. I'm sure WoW arenas. There, of course, was that. It's just in an action setting. I just find it much more. I don't know, fast pace, and it just seems more. It just seems more natural in an action setting. So. It, the better player has a better chance kind of thing, or, oh, his cast time is five seconds. I have this much time. It's not a big deal, you know? It's just, it's interesting, and I love I love seeing that kind of stuff, the old rock, paper, scissors debate. I feel that uh, I'm going to move on here. It's basically, you've said it a bunch. I'm going to read this off a little bit. Um, it's an increase in the skill ceiling. So uh, the movement is dictated in PvP and in PvE. Um, you know, expect to see raid bosses that uh, telegraph moves with it. You know, it's not just, here's the tail, here's the mouth, we keep him this way. This guy might decide he's going to spin and do crazy stuff. Uh, you never know. Um, there, it's just, there's so many more resources to balance. So, 
you're going to see not only the gear that you have help carry you in these situations, but skill is going to be a huge part of it. Uh, and, and more so than just managing cooldowns and pumping out DPS and getting your two hit to the correct variable before you start to generate another stat. Um, it looks like everybody's going to step away, so I'm going to keep talking. I hope y'all enjoy me talking here. Um, what do you mean everyone's going to step away? You can't read. I can't. Somebody said their dog is dying or something. I don't know. Nix um, is going to literally go let the dogs out, Baja, man. Yeah, I'll be right back. I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, so in the, the last little part we wanted to discuss was um, in the evolution of MMOs, they talked about it in the article we put up or not, the article that we found that we showed you guys, but there is a big trend that is um, happening in games, not just MMOs. They're going from, instead of just updating every couple of months, they're updating to every few weeks. They're keeping uh, champions uh, fresh, uh, content, lore, all these sort of things that you're interested in, that you want in a part of a game, fresh, um, so that you, you're you stuck, you enjoy their brand, you don't wanna leave. Look at League of Legends, they do it amazing. Um, League has a little different uh, approach. They like to do champions on a faster pace, and then the gameplay stuff is a little slower, so that's like seeing things like the ARAM map being uh, taken in, uh, the Dominion map. These are very, very large chunks of time, call it very, a couple of months in between them solidifying and making them. However, champions get pushed out every couple of weeks. Uh, in Dota 2, they have champions, uh, but they also seem to have for their, their uh, milestones they put out gameplay at the same time. So you might get a new champion, you might get something cool, whether it's guides that are accessible in the game, or, um, like, Beta, what was the thing you were telling me about that you were doing just recently? Oh, uh, well, that, that was just some custom stuff, so that's outside of Dota's grasp, uh, but we've been playing, like, some custom modes where it randomizes all skills, gives items at certain amount of times randomly, so it just kind of spruces up the gameplay, stuff like that. And uh, games want to not only establish a population that is excited about the content in their game, but they, uh, but is able to feed the most ravenous of players. Uh, those guilds that are, you know, out there putting out the YouTube videos, the streams that are showing you, writing articles on how to do stuff, that are like, we've done this, now what do we do? Uh, we saw that with Guild Wars 2. Uh, a lot of guilds went in, kicked ass in World vs. World, and then after they had, you know, streaks of success, just walked away. That's mostly for PvP. PvE, I'm not really sure. Um, from what I remember, you open up a bunch of crap, you did a couple of whatever dungeon things I barely remember, and that was it. Not much to do, and, and I understand that they've changed their outlook, but this is almost, you know, a year later. Uh, Wildstar is aiming to make the game difficult to help slow player progression and also be able to meet the demand of game content. They've said this over and over and over again. You're not going to level in one day. You're not going to level in two days. That's what we've gotten used to. I'm going to I'm going to right. try hard man mode this. I'm going to get all my snacks. Uh, I'm going to sleep a couple hours for two days on a weekend. Be max level. And, you know, go to work on Monday, get up uh, and be able to get ready for raids, which will be at in a week. You know, uh, they've said we're going to try and make leveling a whole thing and it's not just going to be something that you do to get to you know max level or elden game it's going to be exciting content as you go um and once you get to the end game once you get to elder game there's going to be lots and lots and lots of stuff to do whether you're the big mmo group socializing player and you want to do pve and pvp or you're the solo player and you just want to get into a really cool game with really cool lore and explore and look around and collect up every you know piece of lore that you put, you know potentially can. Uh, that was the last part of that section right there that we wanted to you know mention. And um, where do we see things going in the future? The only uh, big thing we had to mention was uh, the Oculus Rift. Uh, with this piece of technology, we've I, I actually saw the one uh, someone made a mod for Cube World where you're able to wear your Oculus Rift and play Cube World. Uh, where could technology and gaming be going in the future? Uh, how cool would it be to be wearing your Oculus Rift and having your, you know, your keyboard or whatever in front of you, and you're fully immersed in this world that's around you, uh, whether it's you know cartoony and uh, very, uh, I don't want to say wacky, but it's a very uh, unique 
um, style like uh, Wildstar, or maybe even your you know your Elder Scrolls or uh, your Archage or something where you're you're you feel like you're in the game. Uh, that could be where we're going in the future. You know, five ten years from now, uh, we're not looking at monitors. You know, you're, you're putting this thing on your head and literally playing fully immersed uh, visually and maybe even you know um, auditorially. That's not the word. Whatever in a game. Jesus, nice talking. one. Like that? Well, besides you making up that word, um, the Oculus Rift, the the uh, since the dev kits have been around for a while, most have said that games that have a first person view or are able to be scrolled into it. Jen, I can't think off the top of my head if you can confirm whether or not Wildstar has a scroll to first person. Have they said have been much easier modded to move with the head movement if it's in a first person area, which I don't think is, you know, exactly viable for me to play in, but it certainly is cool if you can walk around in that world, you know, that low, that close, and see that. I mean, Oculus Rift's going to do some really cool stuff. Is it going to be make you the best PvP? I don't think so. And Jen can't remember, so no Oculus Rift. All right. <laughs> Uh, no okay. head no, bobbing or no anything. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's hey, that's fine because I don't want to throw up when I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm streaming and I'm like. <laughs> quick, um, quick comment on that. I don't know if you guys ever played the Arma 2 mod Daisy, but the the head bobbing in that game is ridiculous, and I've actually had to get up and walk away. It is so bad. <laughs> Unreal, yeah, that, keep moving. It's bad in that game, and then if anybody's played Star Forge. All the motion blur and everything, I'm just like, <laughs> and I'm, I usually don't get motion sick very easily, and now I'm finally just like, oh god. But uh, blank, would you like me to move into chicken talk or? Yes, and if somebody can type and explain to me what that first one is. Cool. Yeah, I'll just skip it first. Um, yes, all skip right. It. So now we are in, for those who don't know, we are in the portion of the show we like to call Chicken Talk, which is basically a fancy word for what we just call it, your questions. So we're going to get to these. If you have any, if you have any, uh, be sure to place them in chat. Uh, chicken will still grab them until I tell him to stop. That sounded wrong. Whoa. But uh, I don't know Can what that first thing is either. Yeah, let's, let's, I'm going to go into it. Um, let's Let's look Zap at uh, really? Herp Herp Derp. What is it? Well, we don't have a scene set up. Let let him try to set up a scene while we... Um, oh, set Zap, that up, Aegon. Zap put something up about a site competition, and we're going to get more information this weekend, and then did some really silly pun stuff. Zap, are you still around in chat? Uh, we'll come back <laughs> to that. Thank you, More best info soon. <laughs> Chua <laughs> won't believe the prizes. More dash info soon. There's Thanks so out. much wordplay. I can't even handle it. Oh my goodness. We'll so figure. We'll figure that out. We'll let's let's figure that out in a second. If are you good, Aegon? Ah, nope. Just let me know when you're ready. Your mic. Can't hear you. Yeah, we're ready. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah, just cut yeah. to it. I can explain it. So here, we're going to cut to this. It's some fan art. Uh, let's see if we can see it correctly. <laughs> That's just so we're going to need to zoom, Make pal. It bigger. Yeah, I'm getting to it. That's not what... I didn't say it. But what we uh -huh. have here is a Chua riding a Rousedower, and that is obviously the iconic and climactic Sharknado. <laughs> this is quite possibly going to be my background. Um, <laughs> and Sharknados why is this are the best. Shurikens. like that's so good. Shark, Sharknados are so good because yeah, at my work we've an entire we've an entire entire email thread devoted to Sharknado gifts. I love it. <laughs> All right, so now we'll get to the chicken talk. We can just leave that up if you want. I mean, you don't need to see me. <laughs> All right, first question. I haven't read these yet, so here we go. Oh, we are cutting back to me. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Yeah. What? All right. Rain from Enigma asks, 
What do you think about the changes made with the amount of data mining that is released with tonight with, and the thoughts on how it changed the MMO market with sites like Alakazam, Wowhead, ThoughtBot, and have changed how we, the players, play the game? Blank. Go ahead. At this stage, I'm going to do uh, two different answers here. At this stage, when people are data mining and leaking crap, it stinks. Later down the road, when it's like a, a, a website, it's informative, but a lot of progressive progression guilds will already have that uh, knowledge internally. They will have the documents. They'll have that sort of stuff up. It just isn't shared with everyone else. Normally, somebody comes along and says, hey – People might want to know this shit, and we could make money off advertising if we made a website, um, a.k.a. Curse, a.k.a. ThoughtBot. Th these were all someone's side project who was like, hey, we have all this cool information. We should, we could probably make some dollar bills by putting this up. Um, how does it change the market? I don't think it really changes too much. It's more of... The way that you look at it, I guess somebody else might have a, a different perspective. The way that, that I look at it is the information gets released. A, a lot of the hardcore people are going to find that stuff out anyways. Somebody eventually wants to maybe turn a dollar bill and, you know, get some advertising revenue or people like Zap who, you know, has not sold out yet. I'm going to keep knocking on wood here. Uh, does it because he loves it, you know? Um, that's, I mean, that's what we've seen for these things. Some of them. ThoughtBot, Wowhead, all of these, I may be incorrect, but I'm pretty sure those were all started as casual projects, maybe not Wowhead. Um, I know Curse was a, a, a was a site for their, their guild when they really, really started way, way, way back in the day. So it depends where they come from, I guess. That's my thought. Nixus? Right. So when it comes to all these websites, especially with the data mining, it – what I don't like is the level of dependence that people end up having on them, especially when they're playing games where they're, you know, they're doing the crafting and like rather than actually, you know, exploring the game itself, they're just going to a page where it tells you step by step, you know, exactly how many of X item to buy, that kind of thing, following these guides. And it's unavoidable. It's going to happen. Um, what I do especially like with Wildstar is the fact that there is going to be that, that pool of different skills that, for rating at least, where it's going to be a random skill. So they might be able to data mine each of the, the, the different skills in that pool, but you'll never be able to just like go and look up an exact method on how to execute the fight. And that's it. You know, it's, 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 you, you gotta, you're going to need to adapt no matter what you might know what those skills are that he's going to use. And there might be four picked out of like a pool of 20 every week. So it, it, YouTube videos on how to do boss fights and stuff won't be something you'll be going to those websites for. I don't think. However, like, it's really unavoidable for stuff like crafting and, you know, quest progression. So, like, the paths you want to take to be the most efficient, that kind of thing. Um, it's unfortunate that people become that dependent on it. It takes away from the game. But, um, you, you know, people play it the way they want to. Uh, I, I feel kind of hypocritical saying that, too, because if you do play Dota 2, for example, in-game, you actually have, like, these guides that are player-submitted, and you can just go up and hit the little book and use them, and they just teach you how to play a character when you're brand new to it. And I do use that system. Mm -hmm. And does it possibly take away from my learning experience? Um, you know, the experience I have on my own, learning how to play the game, maybe. So I can, I'm not against it completely, but it does take away from it. Good. Aegon? Or blank? Oh my god, I'm never going to get that right, ever. So we just, we I can wanted... just inscribe that in stone. Um, Nixus is bad at Google Docs. And uh, what I wanted to say on topic there's a difference for me in things that are quality of life, and those of you who've been watching the show forever know this, quality of life versus gameplay. Uh, some things, I don't mind their being there uh, because they're gonna, someone's going to mine them out and show them anyways. And if it helps you, you know, kick ass easier or faster, whatever, people want it. Um, my one, I just thought of this with, you know, they talk about Wildstar being wide open for add-ons and letting all these people mess with stuff, and, and they have these beta testers that are, like, making all these cool things. I worry about something like, <laughs> hey, 
this is the first you know raid that's out there somebody goes in and mines out the data and tells you what the variables are for the boss if this is a thing i don't know i don't do you know um coding or any crap like that but that would that's the one thing i just thought of like what if they're able to to mine out that boss one has 10 different variables and so uh a guild like ours is going to get that information we're going to say okay you're going to have to uh, approach every week and it takes away from it so I don't know somebody might be able to tell me whether they can just make that uh, make that like hidden or not but that would be the only thing that really scares me about things being data mined out because that would really suck that would be worse than DBM for World of Warcraft anyways uh, Aegon I think it's inevitable I mean you're gonna have lots of people that don't have the time or the skills to, to, to want to sit around and data mine all the information they need in a game. Um, I, I could say maybe a lot of casual, especially casual crafters and stuff who don't want to try to figure out what the best path is um, to do it. Though you know, A site like that is perfect for them because they, they don't have the time to sit there and figure it out themselves. So, but, so it's, it's, it's inevitable either way. Um, but I'm hoping the data mine definitely doesn't lead to things like, you know, DBM or anything like that. Because that really does ruin the experience and challenge and surprise of what, you know, of the things you're going to face later on. Go ahead. Uh, oh, God, if we deviate to a DBM go, conversation. <laughs> go ahead, Blank, I think. <laughs> wrap that up real quick. Please, God, no. I will say, Josh, I will say see what you've done. Quick. Um, right, DBM, Bardic just said it, also used to paint where the boss's attacks were going to go. Uh, they, they, they nuked that, and there was another one that let you uh, plan out your raid with, like, colors and stuff. They nuked that. Um, DBM basically, on your side, would show you the boss is going to get into phase two at this time. The boss is going to be super pissed off in ten minutes. The boss is going to do this. Everything you needed to know about the boss fight, if you were not in a progression hardcore guild... Um, was given to you. You didn't have to figure it out. All you did was download the add-on, and it told you. Boss is going to drop threat here. The boss is going to... It literally told you everything you needed to know. It, it made things super easy. Uh, I've already said this before. I'm going to say it again. I highly doubt we're going to see something like that, and I hope, 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 and or I'm going to do bitch, 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 bitch later that we never see something like this for, for Wildstar because it shouldn't be a part of the game. You design a boss, you design an encounter, you design whatever around people having to figure out using their skills and experience and everything to beat it. If you are going to leave that information there for somebody to to dig out and give to everybody, what's the fucking point? Excuse my language. Nixus, go ahead. One thing that I find is going to really help avoid having systems like DBM in the game is we're not, we don't even know how the phases are going to work. We don't know if those random skills that they're, you know, they pull out of that pool, how are they going to, like, are they going to be comboed? Are they going to be able to be used in the same phase or in different phases? So let's say week one, the boss has, like, two different damaging attacks. So, you know, you just have to dodge roll out of them, and you're just like, all right, well, if he uses this this uh, this attack, just dodge roll out. But then the next week, he's got, like, one CC plus the attack, and he drops, like, this ooze all around you, right? And if you dodge roll out of the, the the damaging attack into the CC, you're stuck there for like let's say 15 seconds or whatever. That wasn't effective at all. So like, the, the, we don't we don't know how they're going to combine the boss skills together. If it's going to be one per phase, if it's going to be two different ones per phase, because then that's going to like the number of combinations that they're going to have to enter into like any any program like DVM is going to be crazy, right? So it's I, I don't know. I think it's going to really help avoid that. I hope it does. I don't know. We'll wait and see how the ra the, the raids work. But um, I'm pretty confident we're not going to be seeing a, an efficient system like DBN in Wildstar. I do want to mention that Bardic just said, can someone make grid? That is one of those things I consider a quality of life. Uh, something that organizes your raid, helps you target things, put cool icons over them. Awesome. Quality of life things, not a problem. There was an interesting question that came from uh, Chrissy, said, would you use DBM slash healbot type add-ons in Wildstar, if they were feasible, to beat other guilds or not? I am going to say that it would be a huge internal struggle, honestly. 
because I would rather do it legit and be able to show that we did it legit on a stream or on a YouTube video instead of having things cheese handed to us. Uh, so more than likely, if we were really, really pushing perhaps for a new boss, we might turn it on. But my integrity makes me just want to say no. Because I, I would rather fight against it and do it legit and have people know that we did it legit than have shit made easy mode for us. So, Beetle? Yeah, I guess I agree with that. And I, I would like, no matter how tough they are, even in WoW, I would like to try it first and see if our raid group can do it without it first, if there is something like it. But I also trust Carbine with their telegraph system to make it intuitive enough but hard enough that we don't need it in the first place kind of thing like you see it you see the telegraph coming you have this amount of time to dodge somewhere get there you know and i think it's much better it's much better in the pride spot if you can do it without an add-on like that and i feel like the design of the game should be able to handle that and we shouldn't have a problem nexus yeah it's just basically re reiterating what you guys are saying right now it's you know, if we're going to do a fight, if we're going to earn that title or whatever it is at the end, you know, being able to say, you know, we killed that boss, I don't want to have the, the, the fight spoon-fed to me, right? And then later on, whenever I'm like, yeah, you know, I was part of the group that totally downed uh, the Mondo Sack's giant evil creation for the first time, and people are going to be like, yeah, well, whoop de doo you did it following a guy that was just telling you step-by-step step how to do it. Like, I don't want to have to hear that. If I earned it, I earned it, period, you know? Like, yeah, just avoid that all around. Mike? I'm just going to throw this out there. We're, uh, people said, are we going to, so I'm going to explain. We're aiming to be the type of guild that has somebody who's timing out phases, telling us when things are happening. So if anything, we'd be the ones helping drive content to make a DBM or Healbot type of thing. Um, because we want to see the content when it's fresh and new and hard and progressive, and not when it's able to be easy moded anyways. So, again, um, I, I don't see that actually being an issue for us. But, uh, as everyone else said, not going to happen around here. Next question? Yeah, let's go ahead and do the next question, huh? All right. Zergilicious has a two-parter. Let's see. What are the guys' thoughts on early access for pre-orders? Uh, I think it's a marketing thing. It... I'm okay with it if the game's far enough along to, you know, give early access for those pre-orders or something like that, maybe an open beta. It's marketing. It helps drive sales. It's usually for the good of the game if the game is ready for it. Blank? Yeah, same thing. Uh, I hate, like, people were like, hey, I will pay now to do, you know, beta stuff. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather see it be later on when they're they're at that marketing stage where they're doing those open betas and they're like, hey, you know, you could pre-order your something or rather edition and get in. Um, there's a lot of variables that come to getting early access, the, the whole driving people in, um, and then that also goes into their payment model. So early access or not. Sure, okay, whatever, if it makes some more dollar bills. Um, I just hope that they don't uh, do it for the wrong reasons, that it doesn't come from a – it doesn't come when it's supposed to come as part of their marketing plan. It's not like, oh, shit, we're running out of dollar bills. We're just going to open the scrap up. Uh, the next part, I'm just going to – Yep. Uh, hope, thoughts, expectations for changing skill specs on a limited action set. Uh, there's a lot of different ways they could do it. They could make you, you know, buy your talent respects. They could, there's a, there's so many different ways. Um, what are my expectations and hopes? I hope that there are specific instances when you are not allowed to change out your LAS. Uh, if you go into, um, an arena game in PvP, I hope that in the middle of the game you're not able to be like, ah, I'm facing these people, I'm going to do this. I, I, I hope that's not a thing. It could happen. Uh, for, I, of course, hope that you're not able to do it in combat. That's kind of crazy. Um, and for PvE, probably per combat. I guess the biggest one is for combat and or situations. I don't want to see you be able to switch it out. And if you go, we're going to have to find out more about war plots, but... 
depending on the size and the time and things like that, you, you know, maybe that will be part of it. You know, you go from being, or, you know, in a recon role to being, you know, something else. And those, when I say recon, I mean, uh, the actual, you know, what you're doing, uh, comes from my military background. Sorry. Uh, Beetle. Blank with the sweet ramble. Uh, Jen Flanana, I thought came from his Flannan's turntable avatar for the time being was the gorilla. So, Flanana, banana for the gorilla. That's what I got from it, and I'm not sure who created it, but yeah. it's It Little. was so random. Just walked in the turntable one day, saw him talking, and I was, like, hungry for some reason. I was just like, I could go really for some uh, flambéed bananas right now. Those things are so good. And then for some reason, his name just reminded me of that and uh, ended up sticking to Flanana. A little weird, I know. But, <laughs> Flam- <laughs> but uh, I think Flambéed banana sounds now. like rich people. Sounds like rich people food. All right. <laughs> It's, so back to, or you want to keep talking about Flanana's? Let's move no, we're down. Good. This is a good one. Uh, well, so I, I was talking about thoughts and expectations on changing your skills and specs on the limited action set. I go back to Guild Wars 1 a lot, but they did their limited action bar really well with swapping it out. As long as you and by blank just died on his video. Uh, the, the, the way they did it is if you bought the skills then you were able to swap them out, and they called them templates. So as long as you changed your 10 skills and you had bought them before, you could swap them, and you could save and load templates. So you could save it out as, this is my farming build, this is my PvP build, and then when you get to your PvP area, you just load it up, and I thought that was awesome. So being able to buy the skills and then, uh, yeah, being able to use templates, I guess, would be the word for me. Ha, take that, a new mic okay, so it's guy. Essentially the same thing that Rune, um, League of Legends has with the rune pages, that you just swap between them while you're, uh, you set them up yeah. beforehand and swap between them. Right, yeah, it, I guess, but rune pages isn't exact correlation as it would be with a limited action set. Right. But it's okay. Um, so, next question, while Blank is uh, still dead, uh, it comes from Rain yes, again right? from Enigma. Yeah, we can hear you, but you don't have video, you jabroni. We're going to keep going. So, <laughs> he's back. All right. So, Rain basically asks, and this is a wall of text. I'm sorry, Rain, but I did read it. Is back in, back in the day when games were reviewed, it seemed that the, that the reviewers and the, the article writers played the entire game before giving the review, and lately we've been seeing reviewers giving these scores not based on the entire package and how that may hurt MMOs. And I I completely agree that we don't see it anymore, and I think it's because of how many games come out now and how, I mean, how certain sites are able to handle a certain volume of reviews. And there's not many, there's not many guys that can play to the Elder game and give their review in a week when they get it. You know, it's they tend to do their initial review, and then, like, let's say a place like Massively comes back in three months and says, oh, how is Wildstar doing now? This is what we've got here. So it, it, I do hate to see the way reviews are going now because people aren't playing the entire game, and then they get to the end of it, like Mass Effect 3, and everybody freaks the hell out, and there's like, oh, man, this is my favorite game until I beat it. Well, that, okay, then it's not your favorite game. Blank, what do you got? Sweet. I, this is going to be one of those, the, I have one every episode where I say something and I piss somebody off and then Wildstar Central, I have like 15 messages. <clears throat> this is how I feel about this topic. Everybody wants to be first. <clears throat> this is the same newsroom, first edition, first copy, breaking news. People just want to be the first one with the YouTube video. They want to be the first one with an article up. And here's the best part. A lot of the time they suck. They're subjective. I feel like this. I feel like that. And I'm like, you're supposed to be a journalist, dude. Like we do our little vodcast and it's just us messing around. But there are people out there who are part of whatever organizations. I'm not naming anybody. But they're like, we're going to put this article out and it is crap. Um, There was somebody who put up uh, an article a little bit ago that we talked about on Late Night Dominion. That was, I mean, he got uh, slammed a lot. But a lot of it was just subjective crap. 
it's because everybody wants to be the first one to get that content out there. They want to get the views. They want to get this. And that whole part of having a good, solid review that balances subjective feeling with your objective. This is how it's designed. This is how it, uh, it looks. This is how it works. Uh, with with uh, more knowledge is people uh, uh, that seems to have gone away. Uh, maybe even with our old RPG MMOs, you know, um, excuse me, not RPG, the uh, tab targeting ones. It's just what we've seen. People are always trying to get and generate content, and even if it's subpar, they're putting it out there. That, uh, that I feel, is, is what it harms us as a community because I don't really care if we're all retweeting the same crappy article. I wish I was retweeting a really awesome article that somebody took the time to really get into it. That's just me. It's not aimed at anybody. Please do not be too mean to me in my uh, email. But anyways. Um, He's calling people question. out. I All right. Like crazy. Remember and I that. already can't remember how we start pronouncing this guy's name. Is it Rafe, Rafe. or Rafe? 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 I think it's Rafe. Nix just got me all screwed Rafe. up with calling him, like, Rafi <laughs> Deal <laughs> yesterday or something like that. <laughs> Rafi <Yeah. laughs> So it's Rafe. My homie Rafe. How do you think telegraphs play a major role in combat, and how do you think different boss abilities will work? God darn it, Dallas. Will work with it, like an ability that makes you group up or an ability that makes you separate. That's exactly the last line there is exactly what I think about them is they're the ability to create these telegraphs that do those two things that make you group up and make you separate. You know, oh, here's a huge cone, one thing we got to split up. But the next one, all of a sudden, you know, it could even be like a claw, like a claw telegraph, you know, like forcing you to the middle. You know, they can do anything with it. It's, it's digital. It's a game. So that's how I think it's going to play a role. And I hope they get very creative with them while keeping it within the gameplay aspect. But, uh, hang on. Yeah, I mean, I think they've already showed, like, an example of it in one of the videos. Um, there was, like, a combat video with someone fighting, like, like a big dragon of some sort, and the whole entire room was red except for this one little empty circle that everyone would have to run to. Um, so I expect to see a lot of those things, especially when we get to those bigger boss fights and raids. All right. Blank is getting a drink. I'm sure it's... Filled with alcohol. I've noticed he's every time he takes his headset drinker. off, it sounds like a freaking car is driving by. <laughs> yeah, because he oh, he just like he just got back from the store and just like plugged the mic in and was just like it'll work fine. I don't need to do anything. Let's talk <laughs> shit about him while he's gone. All right, Gaz asks, do you want the low? This is what happens when we're live and I read these things. Was it? Do you want the lore up front, though, or do you want to find it in the game, though? Nick says, um, <laughs> read that. I, I, Gaz, why he, you what he's basically me up? asking is, you know, do you want to have all the front presented to you up, you know, all, all the front, all the lore presented to you up front before the game releases, and then there's really not much mystery left whenever the game comes around? Um, or do you prefer to have it, you know, a little, just little bits and pieces before, and then, you know, you find out the majority of it later? I think... You kind of what, what the, the thing they're doing now is you know they're giving you these bits and pieces of different people's history like and I keep using Lazarin as, a, as an example um, because you know you find out that he he has a daughter and that like his wife's dead but they, they don't tell you anything else about it it's kind of like almost like a cliffhanger you're like well what happened what happened to his daughter you know what's the deal there and they're giving you these they're giving you enough information to where you you, you know you feel attached to these characters. You want to find out more about them, but they don't give you enough to where you're satisfied. It, at least not for me, you know. Like with um with Mondo, like they're still kind of like beating around the bush about what happened to like his siblings and whatnot. And it's just like maybe that's something we're gonna find out through a quest line, or maybe that's gonna gonna be part of a raid. Like who knows what's gonna happen? But they're giving you enough no, lore before to where it's interesting, and they're building that universe. Poor lore, please. Please don't even. Oh, he's going there. Well, the, he always talks about how boring lore is, and then he's got his name to talk about the lore question next. Like, dude, I hate lore, man. Oh, man, I'm going to talk about it, though. 
Like, you should have seen, back when we did the lore readings, you should have seen him, because he was streaming, and I saw his face, and while he was doing it, he had this little grin, he was just like, I'm so happy right now, and he didn't want to admit it. Just man up what to What a hipster. Like, well, don't even. <laughs> Listen, I like, I, I will say this, there are parts of Wildstar that I am attracted to as a gamer, because, whether it's personally, uh, art design, whatever. Um... When it comes to the lore and this question, uh, we're not getting it up front. <clears throat> what they're doing is they're gating their information to dr increase their brand awareness. Like Nixus keeps saying Lord Lazarus or some shit, and like Mundo Zax. Oh. Like these are now names that you know. The other Mundo. day we had an interview for somebody in the guild, and they came in and they talked about Endgame as Elder Game. You are doing something right as a marketing and increasing your brand. If people are coming in for their application and they don't call it Endgame, they're like, oh, yeah, so at Elder Game, this is what I like to do. And you're like, did that just happen? Th that's, a, that's a thing. That's what they're doing is, is they're increasing that, that branding very, very slowly and getting people like me who don't really give much about – I, I didn't start reading lore until – see, Wrath. It wasn't until Wrath that I actually start reading lore. And that was because I had three different alts, and, of course, the game got kind of easy cheese mode at that point. But they're trying to make it so people like me are interested and find something intriguing more than just we go in and smash face. Aegon? I think they're definitely gating the information to build interest, but, but also it's a brand new world and a whole brand new game. So they really do need to help build a story up front so we kind of get a feel for this world before we even get there. Yeah, I don't want them to reveal a whole lot before we get there, but I want a base background of what this world is, what this universe is, who some of the major fe figures in that universe are, <coughs> but I don't need a whole lot revealed before I start playing. I can learn all, learn all that in game. But I think that's, that's what they're trying to do, is basically give us a base build up of, of this world so we can have a feel for it before we even get there, as well as getting the information and ga engaging interest. In it as well. <coughs> All right. Good, uh, Nixus. You have more to say? Nixus. Just, just, to, just to wrap up on this. I mean, just as proof that you know they're not really handing you everything right off the bat. Um, you, you know, we still don't know what's going on on Nox. Like, what's going on with the rest of the, uh, <laughs> with, with the rest of the Granok that are back on the home planet. We don't know what's going on. You know, with Dorian Walker's sister, uh, daughter, and you know, like, there's a lot left open. Then you. At least myself, when I'm reading through it, like I keep asking myself, I'm like, well, they mentioned this, but like they didn't really go into it anymore. Like, what's going on there? Like, and I've got all this whole list of questions. But yeah, hashtag lore. Uh, what I liked earlier was hashtag the lore closet, and that applies to blank there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Did Jason Todd really die? No one's gonna get that. All right. Uh, next. Flannon asked, did Blank read up on Venn Diagram since last week? No, Blank doesn't know how to read. Ketherim asked, Chicken, I have a question. How long do the guys think they could last against Bardic and PvP at release? Uh, that question should be flipped around. Evil yep. Kuru guys would ask. Wait, wait. wait. I'm flying. We, we, no, we have a bat. There's a standing bat with... Uh, oh, yeah. CRB Bardic, that uh, if we win whatever convention that we happen to go to next, she's buying the beers. However, if her group, and I think Econ decided to back her up in Twitter the last time I checked, so uh, she gets whatever group of whoever, and if they win, I'm going to buy the beers. But uh, just so you guys know, this is a thing. Like, this will be something yeah. you see on YouTube, and then we'll be followed up with who pays for what, so... Anyways, P, P Chan likes to talk some mad smack. We'll say that. Uh, Evil Kuru asks, I would love to ask what the guys think about, about having a ranking and information about boss fights like Wipe and how much, how many groups killed it. That's, you know, that's data that's always cool to see on some, uh, you know, some uh, third-party sites. I saw some stuff in chat talking about, you know, what percentage made it to this certain time at this boss, graphs. I love seeing that kind of stuff, but it's usually it's usually not by the devs themselves, and it's usually data mined out um, based on some other stuff like that. So I I think it's just kind of like the wow head stuff. You know, we, we may see it, and I'd love to see the data. 
We, we mentioned this briefly during a past episode. Um, I, I brought up the idea of having, you know, like um, in-game boards where you can actually go into town and go to those PvP rankings directly in the game. There wouldn't be too much detail. It would just tell you the guilds that have accomplished the, the raid that week and who did it, like, the fastest kind of thing. It would be as simple as that. If you want any more information, like actual graphs and details on, like, the DPS and whatnot, you'd go to these third-party websites. But um, we did we did kind of cover this during the last uh, a past episode, and I think it would be fun because it would add a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a competitive edge to the PvE, which, uh, I mean, if you look at... The first thing people always complain about is the lack of content, right? And that's one of the first things I'll complain about, but I'm, I'm the first one to go play Dota 2, and it's the same map over and over and over. And why do people love stuff like right. League and Dota? It's because, you know, you've got the competitive edge to it, and you're trying to do better every single time. If you're just beating it for the loot, that's not enough, in my opinion. you you got to beat it for the loot, and you got to beat it to be able to, to show, like, hey, we're better at this than all of you other guys are, so... We Go need a timeout. Mark. We need a timeout. You're right, allowed to call timeouts. No, I'm calling, dude. I'm calling timeout right now. Oh, I'd yeah. love to hear about it. What Do you I see miss? this? There's the other people want in on this bet. Flannon, Shell, Josh. You guys, y'all want in on this. We'll make this a deal. But I'm just telling you right now, you're back in the wrong horse. I'm saying, what bet did I miss out on? Yeah, the, there's the horses. Bet, <laughs> the the there's bet was and... um, whenever we get a chance to do PvP, I believe mm. it, the discussion at the time was like arena fives or something. Um, I said, hey, if our guild wins, you owe us beers. If you guys win, you owe us us beers. <clears throat> Excuse oh, right. me, at whatever convention we go to, but. Uh, and then Econ started mentioning, this was a while ago, Econ was like, oh, we got her back, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, great, PvPing with a bunch of Econ nerds, that should be awesome. And so the whole rivalry has started. Um, but it's the it, it now apparently is a whole big a big thing. So this is a I'm, – I'm very uh, – I'm, I'm looking forward to this quite a lot. Uh, there is I, I just question. hope for, for both our sakes that wherever it is that it's open bar and I don't have to pay either way, so – but, um, I'm going to do this next question really quick so you can move on. Uh, somebody sure. name I'm not going to say because it's going on YouTube. Uh, That's awesome. What is each of your preferred method, uh, payment method, methods, if cash shop, why, if monthly payment, why, and what do you think they'll go? We've talked about this a shit ton. Feel free to check out our other episodes. Some of us, uh, we're really looking forward to hybrid. It could mean a lot of things. Um, more than likely, it won't be pay to win. Um, uh, we all really strong, strongly lean towards some sort of subscription base, um, and there's a lot of ins and out to, to uh, going a bunch of different ways. Uh, I think a lot of us said cash shop hopefully is cosmetic stuff, um, but able to you know maneuver around a meta game if they have things like XP boost and crap like that. Blah. Next question. All right. Mr. Fallen Angel asks, what do they think of trying to raid with boss effects being displayed on the ground while also trying to do their abilities? Also, how will this hurt or help people who heal as seeing healers get blamed for everything? Easy as this, if you're a healer and you're paying attention and you're healing people and you see your DPS or, or tank get, like, get nailed by some telegraph and die and they say, oh man, where's the heals? Tell them to get the F out of the telegraph in time, and that would have never happened in the first place. Like, it, if they can't blame if there's, like, boom, sent across the room dead. One, I can't heal through 8K damage or whatever it's going to be. Two, I saw you standing in it. Shut up. I mean, and we, just need, we just need our healers to just stand up and take a, take a stand when they see that kind of thing happen. It's just like, oh, man, heals? No. Get out of the red circle and shut up. I'm sorry if that's mean, but if you're going to try to blame me if I'm healing and I see you stand in it, I'm angry at you first. And I'm yelling at you first. Ha! Not reading that. All right. <laughs> Shell asks... Is there going to be another round of lore reading Q&A now that there's two more interviews? I would assume Nixus wants to do something like that. He is moving to another place where they make a lot of maple syrup soon. 
So hey, I'm moving to where the original poutine came from, so careful. <laughs> oh my god, yes, poutines. If I lived in Canada, I'd already be dead instead of two weeks from now. Dude, I've got right. my weekly poutine go, and it's terrible. But um, yeah, there will be more QA readings, hopefully sometime. Uh, poutine, you french fries, right. homemade gravy, cheese curds, and you can add on whatever you want, including bacon, burger meat, whatever the heck it is. Boom. It's delicious. And maple syrup. You Most people just call it on. french fries and gravy, but the actual name is poutine. The cheese curds make it poutine, it's, sir. <laughs> it's a wonderful <laughs> creation, really. Oh, my goodness. You feel terrible about yourself after, but during, you're just like, I'm a nut. Oh, yeah, you anyway. don't keep a loaded gun near me. Go ahead. <laughs> um, we will have more QA read in mid-August. Uh, I, my intention was to have them a little bit earlier, but things have been so hectic. So definitely keep an eye out on the thread that we're going to have up and um, – and on our channel and stuff, we'll follow us on Twitter, too. We'll be updating them. So keep an eye out. All right. Moving on, we've got uh, looks like our last question for the night, and it's again from Rain from Enigma. Thanks for all the questions, Rain. How do you feel about being a big bad? Yes, I watched Buffy with lore leading up to finding out who or what is. Do you need, feel it's better to have a trio or group collective as the big bad leading up to the final fight. <sighs> That's more probably for Nixus. I mean, I love I love games, but when it comes to, like, the big bad and all that stuff, I kind of keep that in the story more to single players games. Like, I don't really... F I feel like MMOs should have a looming doom, you know, or a... An, or a what is it? Imminent threat like waving over the world like oh god there's this whole bad guys coming in not just one bad guy because then and this is from a development point of view then it leads itself to say oh yeah you, here comes another bad guy from said dark force because then you can bring in more content and there's always like there's always an expansion where it's you know wrath of the lich king oh my god the lich king's now able to be killed so it just with Better than having, you know, and I'm killing myself for not knowing the Sonic, the Sonic boss's name. Someone's going to get it for me. But that kind of big bad and, like, them just having a threat so you can just keep adding content and these are the bad guys and they're from this faction kind of thing. Dr. Eggman, mm. thank you. Thanks. But uh, that, that's my <laughs> thought on it, and I, and I think it's I think it's more from a development point of view and then more from a content point of view is – if you have Shadow Faction versus Nixus the Terrible, eventually you're going to kill Nixus the Terrible and probably before Endgame because he's not that great. But if you have the faction there, you can constantly be adding content raids, dungeons with a boss, a general, lieutenant from such and such faction that may have cool lore. He killed off Mondo's axe's second cousin, Terry, and... I don't know. I'm just talking about random shit now. I'm sorry. Nixus. Um, when, when it comes to that, though, you're right about having, like, that looming doom kind of thing. Um, you know, for example, with the Elden, you know, where are they? Where, why'd they leave? You know, did they – were they taken away? Did they decide to abandon the planet? That kind of thing. So if that's the case, you know, why? What's going on? Have we not found out why Nexus has been abandoned? That kind of thing. So it, it's – there. there's always the, the room left for there to be that, that looming doom. Is it necessary to have that one main, you know, bad guy, you know, the, the guy that everybody's coming together to fight and take down together? I don't think there needs to be. There's enough going on there, especially, you know, with it, with the different little subsections. So you've got the Mordesh who are already infiltrating the – are you making fun of my hand movements? No, <laughs> I'm making no. fun of blank space <laughs> typing so loud. It's a European thing. We talk with our heads, okay? No, but – um. Uh, having a, the big bad, I don't think is necessary, but having that like long-term, you know, potential apocalypse, like Ragnaros kind of thing is important to have there. Mm -hmm. Cause you're, you're not just concerned with the other faction. You're always like, what's, you know, at the end of the, on the other end of the horizon kind of thing. So Nixus and I, know I chicken agree. Juice, definitely not Italian. Right down French somewhere. people tend to talk with their hands a lot too. So what's up, dude? Yeah. That's yeah. Voulez -vous que... Yeah, may <laughs> we. The the reason I was zoning out there, some people said, and uh, I wanted to throw this out there. I went and actually found 
the the exact um, challenge and acceptance. Um, the link I just put in chat. Uh, basically, it says, uh, "Is this a place where I can publicly say my team versus your team, Jen? Dominion domination, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And a challenger appears, and I said, "Any terms are fine except laundry and dishes." Loser buys the first round is my offer. Response. 3rd of April says, that sounds good to me. To me, First round, you never said beer. Beer's cheaper than, you know, drinks, so. Oh, sweet liquor. I'm just, saying, I'm just saying, we didn't say nothing about bottles, and I just, it's right there. I found it for the you. The internet doesn't lie. Think. It I read it on Wikipedia. It's, it's there forever. So, uh, anyways, uh, we do have to... Uh, <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> Nick's just I, I, I heard liquor and got overly excited. That's completely true, and that means I need to go <laughs> see somebody. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, goodness. We have a lot of – okay, when do you guys pick which uh, hashtag you guys like for the, the pictures. Uh, oh, I kind of like this one. man. That's the worst one. It's the best one. No, that's – you're – the one you just highlighted? Mm. Did I just mute that? Here. Did I just mute? Was that did it that was that a thing? Did this I get it? one. That one for sure. Yep. Alright. Okay guys. So if uh you want to participate, get your uh mobile device or whatever you use. I use my mobile device. Take a picture of your mouse and your keyboard and your hands, put it on Twitter, and the hashtag is going to be. <laughs> I gotta get my copy. Just type here. it. Bardic Tunnel Syndrome. Right. And there. we're not by any means implying that you have this syndrome, Jen. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the best one out of all of them there, so. Whose was it? How do you take a – oh, my God. That's the best question ever. How do you take a picture of both your hands, your mouse, and your keyboard at the same time? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> my head just Try exploded. To, like, hold it. <laughs> 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 now I think about it. What the fuck? You tape it to your forehead. <laughs> Obviously. I got Who needs Google Glass? Just, like, tape your phone right I here. Just, well, I think I just have my <laughs> fake girlfriend take it for me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that she'll oh, probably wow, love that. That was awesome. She doesn't watch this. It's fine. She she doesn't know this is a thing. Um. All right. So, again, uh, thanks for stopping by. This is our weekly Wild Star uh, podcast. It's live, as you can tell. Uh, we love doing it. We've got 15 episodes. That's awesome. We love everybody that shows up. If you're new, if you're watching us on YouTube. You can always uh, mail us any questions or comments on Wildstar Central. Our names are the exact ones you see here. Uh, mostly send them to Nixus or myself because, you know, we're, we're super, super busy. And I guess, isn't that your title, Nixus? Community? Something? He does something, something. with the community. I don't, know I don't even. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we all just kind of, bleh. Uh, wanted to Stop. say again, make sure to follow the, the Twitch channel. Um, make sure to follow us on Twitter. We don't always post the same crap, I promise. That is kind of a joke from the beginning. Uh, like our page on Facebook. And um, if we didn't mention it, we still are in the works for a Wildstar Town Hall. Uh, just like we set up before, it will be, again, for uh, the North American time zones and the European time zones. So um, that's all i got to say. Thank you so much for stopping by. It was great to see everybody. And uh, looking forward to seeing you folks uh, next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Stop by again. I did this as a wave for a second. I'm an idiot.